Hi everybody, welcome back. It's Phil Demetriotis. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start by working on painting part of the planet. And um, what I should have done if I had more time is I was going to do a small sphere and then take uh, the steps uh, that I might have learned from or also the failures and or ideas that I learned from painting that small sphere and apply it. But I've sort of run out of time. And it's just been a little too busy. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm going to start painting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to grab like a, a light turquoise <clears throat> somewhere about in the neighborhood, uh, maybe up about in here, a little bit of glow. I'm going to go around and paint that around sort of the outside. Then I'm going to work my way in to a little bit of sort of like a... Um, like a darker blue. So I'm thinking about sort of like a navy bluish, the dark side of the moon somewhere. If I'm looking at this color, maybe about there. I Now, to me, that's really dark, but if I go up there, it's not dark enough. That's pretty similar to where I'm at right there. So I feel like I got to go a little bit darker because it is sort of a night, you know, you're in space and it's sort of like a night shot. Okay. All right. So with that set and ready to go, we're going to come over here, and what I'm going to do is I have a layer selected up above, and this is just going to be sort of like a, just good, good old-fashioned experimental passes here. I have this really nice fuzzy brush here that I've given to you guys as students, so I'm going to start with that. And what I'm going to do is sort of come along the top here, and I have my brush opacity set right now at, I'm going to put it about 50%. And um, let me just enlarge this a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to sort of come along here. One of the goals I'm trying to do is really get this really nice feel of a uh, sphere. Even though I can't see this full sphere, I want to be able to really push the darks in here and try to get a little bit of a change happening. And I don't know if you could see it, but I could already sort of feel it sort of coming in there. It has a real spherical effect already. And now watch, once I switch over and I go to my lighter color, now this one, my opacity is going to have to be set down quite lower. Because um, watch what would happen if I come in here and I paint this right now. See, that's pretty cool, but it's almost too much. I want to be able to have a slow build up. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back to a, about maybe a 20. And I'm just going to lightly sort of come in here and come across the edge like that. Okay. And I'm going to try to keep the circle of my brush not overlapping more than let's say like a quarter of an inch like that okay because then when I'm done with my planet I get to also come in and then I get to really put like a glow coming off of the planet so right now if you look let me show you my ants okay see I have this area selected right now and I have it hidden and I'm painting on a layer above my dark local value okay so that's the way I like to work I prefer to work from dark and then build up on top of that with some other um, lighter values and other textures, okay? So, so every now and then I'll just go to 100% and go, ah, and look at that. I'm like, man, that does get pretty bright, and it really does start to pop it quite a bit. So I know if I come back here, I think that's one of the things that separates, you know, the more that you digital paint, the more that you practice, you sometimes can just hit the opacity down on a key and, like, really nail it. You know, and just really get a really strong uh, uh, gradient flowing through the paintbrush. And when you're doing that, what you're really doing is you're creating this, you have this confidence in you where you've done that stroke so many times you can just do it. I haven't painted a planet I, in a very long time. I think I painted one about five years ago. Um, so I'm a little rusty here. So I'm going to take my time and just sort of build it up really slow. And a lot of times, like now, I'm going down to just 10%. And just coming in here very lightly, trying to really push getting that planet feel, that rounding part of the sphere, okay? Um, and I can still push this a little bit more. I want to come back in here like a 20 or 30. I really want to come along this edge. I really want to get that edge to sort of pop. So I'm trying to just keep my brush in a solid stroke. And in the same place, I wrap around. It's a little hard because your hand naturally wants to adjust a little bit and you know you're it's just something that's going to happen but I'm starting to like that quite a bit now I'm going to come in here 
and see if I can lightly just sort of get a little bit more spread in there. Just sort of come down right through there like that. Okay. So definitely starts to have a little bit of a planet feel to me. So one of the next things I thought about doing was establishing down below the continents. And I don't know what kind of planet this is, but when I'm saying continents, I'm saying the difference between land masses. So um, the way when I looked at my some of my reference, um, it could be different. Land masses tend to be very dark blues, and then sometimes uh, the lighter blues can be... Um, uh, ice, or it could be, uh, uh, excuse me, the sea mass tends to be very dark blue and the land mass tends to be a little bit lighter. So I can try doing that a little bit here. The great thing about doing this on separate layers um, is that I already sort of figured out in my brain, I was thinking about it, I want to have a land mass build up. And by the way, I'm thinking this is the benefit of painting textures, okay, whether they're cube textures. So because everything's always a buildup in Photoshop with texturing. So I'm starting with the land mass, and then I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to type in ocean mass. And who knows, maybe I end up changing the color. And, and then the other thing, too, since this is a planet that I've never heard of, I mean, look, if we were to come over here, and if you were to type in um, Hubble telescope planets, there are some planets out there that are just like absolutely amazing that we have pictures of. So, I mean, again, this is another benefit of having some really good reference out there. I mean, look at this. This is something that NASA's telescope took a picture of. That's like a sun glowing. And, you know, this could be a warm planet like that, too. It could have that type of glow. So I'm looking in here, looking at the details of these land masses. I have these medium colors. Um, you know, I think this is really cool, too. Um, you know, um, I don't know, what's this? This is another blue planet. That, so if you go look at some of the, the images that Hubble Telescope has got, that's Mars. You know, this could really give you some, like, look at that. That's pretty fascinating, right? It could be a really evil location. Look at how cool that is. Oh, that gives me some great ideas right there for something totally different. <laughs> okay. So reference is everything, right? So what I'm going to do is now when I come into my land masses, um, I'm going to see if I can't just make a series of selections and I'm going to fill them first. So what I'm going to do is just make some land uh, masses that might look a little bit like this. And then I'm thinking about wrapping them around and having them getting smaller as they go away from me. They're wrapping around the circumference of this object. And so when they they come out wrapping through here so to wrap this sphere really convincingly i might have to do a landmass sort of in that direction okay um but then what i'll do i didn't like that whatsoever um maybe something that's curving a little bit like that yeah see that's matching part of the circumference of what i just placed in there and who knows maybe there's this other mass here maybe there's some other little break off island pieces let's say um you know maybe it looks like there's sort of oceans in here so another thing too is i could change this up i could this is can also be accidental meaning that i could go for a, a particular land mass and it could end up looking like an ocean mass instead so i mean that's one of the benefits about painting with textures and digitally uh really understanding part of your subject matter so here really want to try to get this to wrap around a little bit maybe like that okay and if i don't if i miss an area i can come back later if i have a like i have a little bit of overspray right here no worry i could have created a layer mask or i, I really don't like using layer masks that much but you could always change something now the buildup of a texture which reminds me of rust textures i can have different masses on top of each other doing different things the great thing for me is that if i have this selected as a layer, I sort of have it in there, locked in, and then I can make other changes as I want. So I'm going to go pretty dark on this. I'm going to think, actually, I was thinking of going lighter. This should be, yeah, this is my landmass. I should be going much lighter somewhere in the realm. Let's see what happens if I end up somewhere about here. Can we go a little bit more over here? Let's try something like this. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit H for high. And I'm going to see if I can't come in here 
because lightly start to paint in some of those masses and see how it feels. Now, I'm not going to get anything I really want. This is a planet. I'm not going to have like tons of hard edges. But what I can do is I can blur this right now. And here's what I was really thinking about doing is by putting down these masses here, then I could build darks underneath and I could start building. This is how you paint rust. You build a series of dark textures against light textures. You shift them all around. You blend them together. So one of my first ideas was taking this, which look, it's sort of my land masses up on top. Okay. And I could get a lot more detail with it, but I'm, I want to put it through a, a blur. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to image and um, I have it on a hotkey. I never really look it up this way, but what am I doing? It's going to filter actually. Filter gallery and I'm going to go to blur. I'm going to go down to Gaussian blur. I like Gaussian blur because I can control it. And so I can look and see what it's doing. And if you see that right there, it really gives me a good feel. I'm about, that's pretty good blur. And what's cool about that, if I hit OK, I might actually come in here with my eraser then to like about 20. And I need to lightly blend some of this mass in here and erase some of the edges off a little bit. It's pretty cool. Okay. So that's sort of step one. Now, what I wanted to do is let me create, I want to create some dark shadows. So I'm just going to call a little shadow layer. And I had this idea of going around and sprinkling little bits of darks and then shoveling them around. Then I'm going to come back and I'll build up with some more highlights. And then I'll come back in. I'm going to treat it almost like a rushed texture. Okay. And the great thing is with Photoshop, I can then go around and move a bunch of my layers. So this one I go, I'm going to go a little bit more to like this sort of darker blue somewhere about here, almost like a cerulean blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and take one of my texture brushes. So by the way, this is what irks me about the new 2020. That's the best size I can get to my brush tips. Really, I can't enlarge them anymore. It's, you know, I can't get in there and, and really get to see them a little bit better. That's, I mean, I could do this a little bit, but I don't know. And then I lose them. I wish I, the old version, this wasn't up on top, and I could throw my brushes down here along my bottom bar, and I could see all them a lot easier. You know, I'm making a large ear, but then they all go off the screen. It just was a lot easier the way it was before. Okay, so textures. Um, let me come down here, and I'm going to go over here. That's, that's a really cool texture. Some of these do different things. Let me start with this guy right here. I think this is on a rotate, so I'm just going to start to pepper in a little bit. I'm going to bring this under some of my shadow masses here. So that's immediately, for me, that's way dark. Um, so let me go back a couple steps. And there. Let me go back to like a three. So it does this sort of shift on its own, which is sort of cool. Now, I'm looking at that, and here's the great thing is as you build it up, there are pros and cons to that. See, if I darken it, lighten it, so I get it to blend in a little bit and it starts to look like little masses in there. And then since I have it all selected, what I can do is I can select some of it like this. Now, it didn't quite all select because some of it's very light. Let me turn off my other layers, see where I'm at. That's actually sort of cool. There's quite a bit in there. Um, so let me do this. Some, an old trick I learned with textures. I'm going to duplicate the layer. And then the one on below, I'm going to make much darker. And then, so let me turn off the one on the top. So the one here, I'm going to go to levels. And I'm going to push up the darkness quite a bit and get a little bit darker. And then you come back up here to the layer that's on the top. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter. I'm going to push it to the lighter side of the spectrum a little bit like that. And then what you do is you hit V, your move tool. And then you sort of lightly move it. Aha, do you see what that did? It creates a dark shadow sort of underneath. And if I hit deselect, and then if I come back over, and if I take these and sort of blend them in a little bit, and there's a couple ways I can blend them in. Uh, my favorite way is probably opacity. Try to get some opacity in there. And you see what that just did? It really created a nice little sort of landmass texture structure to part of my planet there. <laughs> okay. So I want to keep doing 
sort of what I was doing. And I'm just going to keep building this and then keep adjusting. As I keep working on this, there's so many little, little, you know, bits and details that I haven't put in there yet that could be happening and that I need to just keep building up. Okay. So um, let's come over here. So I didn't put any ocean mass. I just have those land masses. So for ocean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and take brush. <clears throat> see if I can go perhaps a little bit darker and just see what happens with a nice texture. See if I can fade some of this in here very lightly. A little bit of trial and error just to build it up and see how it starts to look. Okay, so I'm not, I'm just going to continue. I need to stop talking because I'm going to just want to keep going over this. I want to come back in here and adjust these masses. So what I'm going to do to save myself time is I'm going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to rotate it a little bit and then see if I can't scale it down and get it to fit in as another form of detail. <clears throat> One little area because there's all these little pockets, right? I'm going to select all and copy that. I'm going to copy it because then I could go in. So I'm going to erase. Oops. Hold on. There, so let me turn it on and off. There, I want to erase any of the overflow that I have in here. And I have a brush that I really like using for my eraser. It's this guy right here. <clears throat> so I'm going to get in here and have some overlap in there. I want to erase some of that out of there. Get that other mask to blend in a little bit. So this is just part of the good old overlay options of having multiple layers sort of building them up on top of each other. And then, you know, you want to get rid of any hard edges. And we're doing that just by taking a simple, you know, eraser brush and going along some of the edges and dulling things down and getting them to blend in a little bit. And see, that really created some really nice little speckle patterns in there. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to keep going and keep trying to build up a little bit more. <clears throat> Let me paste. So here's that detail I already had in my memory. <clears throat> I'm going to transform that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I want to get some of that detail up around, maybe in another part over here a little bit. A little bit larger. Okay. And then I'm going to go erase some of that, blend it in a little bit. Right now I'm just using a mouse. It's just easier. I'm just coming along the edges. I have my brush. Eraser set at about 30% opacity, and I'm just lightly going along, sort of blending some of that in. And I've noticed looking at other parts there can, of a planet, there can be all kinds of other little milks and crannies and little elements in there. So I'm just going to keep going and try to build up more and more, you know, <clears throat> so, and then just see where I'm at from there. Let me erase a little bit of that, get that to blend in a little bit. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Starts coming together a little bit. I'm going to leave it all on different layers and just keep adding. Okay. Um, and curious, what if I come in here? I want to do another cool texture and go from dark to light. So let's take a dark. And that looks pretty good. Um, let's try this brush here. Now that's at 100%, right? That's way too bright. But what I could do, because if I had it in there super bright like this, and then I could just drop the opacity down and blend it into another layer. It could create these little pockets of dark and light in there. I also have this brush, it's just like a sand brush too. That can also create some really cool effects. That one doesn't really work. Where that could work is if I were to transform that and bend that around. We'll do that in a couple of minutes. We'll get some textures that are bending in there. Okay, I also have this wonderful um, 
a couple other related texture brushes. I'm going to get that around the round part of the planet, let's say, like that. So you're probably wondering, like, man, what's he doing? Why is he going so crazy? You'll see. Because I'm going to blend some of these in. That's cool. That's a good brush. It rotates. Creating some of those patterns in there. So look, now I can come back to this and see I can drop and blend that texture in a little bit. A little more. There, you see how that creates this nice little dark and light. You know, planets are not going to be perfect. They're going to have little imperfections like that, sort of flying around, floating around and part of it. Um, so I'm going to merge those two layers together right now. And then let me see, come up here and put another layer. Let me try to get zero. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. If I just run through, look at that. If I just go whoosh, and hit that real quick, it does quite a bit. Same thing with this. Now, I, I could check out other layers and see what it does. Like if I put that into overlay. That's not really working as well. Let me just merge it back down. Drop opacity on it, see if I can blend that in with a little bit more of a textured feel to it. So I'm getting that sort of nice, <clears throat> sort of gritty feel to the planet, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so I, I like that. It makes it feel like I have some masses down there and some other goodies. So that's good. I like it. I'm going to take that, merge that with the other one. What's cool is you can even duplicate some of your layers here and then see what's working. So I duplicated 16 here. And I like it being a little bit more gritty there like that. I think that was pretty cool. Okay. All right. So let's merge these three together. And now what we're going to do next is let me go in here and I just want to keep experimenting with some more textures. I have some clouds down there we're going to do in a little bit. I wanted to try a large texture and try scaling it down. So let me just double check. I'm going to create another um, another layer up top here. Okay, now that's a pretty heavy texture right there, right? Now, what's cool is I can go to Transform. I'm going to take this guy about here. I'm going to go to Warp, okay? And I haven't gone to Warp yet in the new version of Photoshop. There it goes. See, I can wrap that up to there. Oh, that's cool. That's sort of cool. I like the old version of Warp where I could modify the little squares in between the middle, but I guess they sort of have the same. So that's sort of cool. <coughs> now I'm running out a little bit of room over there. So I need to really get that to blend in a little bit. So I might have to just pull this down a little bit more like that. And let's see what that type of effect does. And let's do the same thing. I just want to drop down a little bit of opacity and blend it in. See, that creates a nice little, that's, that's, how I, that's how I build rust, as I slightly build up these texture variants that start to make something look somewhat realistic or like appealing, you know, because then I can get the glow of the planet, I can get some clouds in there, and I just keep building it all up. And that's cool. It has a nice little effect there. So let me try another one here up above here and make these a little bit bigger. Maybe like about there. So let's go to transform again. I'm going to go to warp and let's wrap it this way. Let's bring this end up here. Bring this end back over there. Grab the Bezier curves there a little bit. Try to get it into position about here. <clears throat> Do the same thing up about here. Hit enter. And then let's drop the opacity down a little bit. That looks pretty cool, right? There's some real, some nice looking grit, some different things in there. Now, what's really cool is you got to move your layers around. Like, what, what happens if I drop that under landmass? What if I bring it under shadow copy like this? If I bring it all the way down here, does that do anything? It really didn't change it too much. But sometimes you just got to screw around a little bit and see how else you can sort of build part of your uh, planet idea here. Okay, so 
I'm trying to think what else I should do. I want to put more glow on that, treat it on the outside. Um, I don't do too much though because I don't know what some of the other detail is going to be. Part of me wants to get in there with a brush a little bit and paint like little some little ocean waves and have some clouds or some other goodies in there. So what, what I think I might do is I let me mess with the land masses and then I'm going to go into the clouds a little bit and see what I come up with. So I'm going to take this guy here. Go ahead and merge these together. <clears throat> now we'll be honest, whenever I'm doing a demo, whenever I'm talking, I never really produce as good as work sometimes because you're not as focused as if you are when you're doing it just on your own with having pure concentration. You know, you're just not. God, I hate the new transformation tools. Ugh. It's different. Not quite there yet. Not a fan. Photoshop. Put things back. Look at that. Now I gotta hit Alt to go in there and then Alt doesn't do it. Is it control? Yes, there it is. It's just different than how it used to be. I just don't, I'm not really a fan of it. It's sort of a pain in the butt. And then if I want to do one area, I have to go back to Alt again. Yes. Distort. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right. We got lots of layers there. <clears throat> and I want to merge a couple around. I just like to go through and turn them off and on and see what's sort of doing what. <clears throat> I want to take all my land masses, merge them together. There, that's all my land masses. Because I had an idea if I made it darker underneath and moved it about. So let me take my shadows and commit to those. Take part of my land mass here. <clears throat> and I'm going to um, duplicate it. Put it underneath. I'm just curious what if I go real dark with it, how it would change. Hold on. It's not really reading. Nah, it's not doing what I want it to do. Let me hit select. There, it's much brighter. I was trying to, I wanted to darken it and go the other way. Let's see if I can do it just like this. There it is. That's weird. Before, it wasn't giving me the levels mark. Now it's giving me the full levels mark. I didn't do that before. Yeah, I wanted to see what would happen if I were to darken part of that landmass like that. <clears throat> Let me duplicate it on top of itself so it gets really dark. Okay, like that. And now I'm going to merge those layers together and then I'm going to turn on the light above it and then I want to shift that light above it over a little bit more. There, and it creates a little bit of a weird texture. So you see that, how I did that? It sort of makes that <clears throat> little, like little bits of shadows to the planet, which creates a little bit of realism. I sort of like that. Like there's some different masses to it. It just makes it feel like it's it's a little different. Again, it's something for me to build off of. So I really like that quite a bit. In fact, let's go back. Look at the shadow difference. That's where we were. God, I want to duplicate that shadow. So what if I duplicate this guy again? How much more is it going to make that pop? Now, yeah, look at that. It makes some real huge craters in there, but that's a little too overkill. So I'm going to delete that layer, and I want to come back here to these other shadow masses. And then what if I duplicate one of those? Let's see what that starts to do. Now, that that it's maybe a little bit too much texture. It definitely gives you the feel of like a tundra-based planet. So I'm going to take my eraser here, 
And what I'm going to do is just sort of come along the edge here and erase any leftovers there might be right there. <clears throat> it's a nice little buildup, I think. All right, <clears throat> with that done, I'm going to commit to everything I have. <clears throat> and I'm going to merge it. And look, there I am. So I'm about 20 minutes into this, and that's a texture I have for my planet. And I haven't even got to the goodies yet. And I have a little bit of overspray here. I'm going to take my eraser sort of come along. So what I want to mess with now is clouds and clouds formations that are curving along there. So I'm going to create a new layer up on top here. And, and clouds are also changing. There are lighter clouds, darker clouds, so it's really going to give me a time, opportunity to blend in some really cool items here in uh, part of this demo. Okay. So um, luckily, I have a pretty good cloud library. And one of the great things about clouds is you can make lots of clouds and then shrink them down. Um, so let me just take a couple variants that I have here. And um, I'm going to try off going a little bit lighter, and then we'll go for some darker clouds. Now, without a doubt, if I hit this right now, <coughs> that really doesn't look like a cloud. It's actually a painted version of a cloud. And here's the thing about cloud brushes. You can have a cloud that might work and at 10%. And then it might work at opacity being at 1%. What I mean by that, if I go down to like 1, and, and if I, I'm using my mouse again, old habit, if, if I come in here, pressure sensitive, and I go like this, and I sort of build up a pathway for a cloud, and then if I come in here and go to like 5 real quick and hit one little area, and then come down, it really creates this very nice, soft, subtle flow of a cloud and then if you change your brush size a little bit and you get in there you can really create a cool feel of a cloud again sort of wrapping around a little bit of atmosphere there now that's movable and I want it to be movable because you see I can put it in different areas it might affect so up there it feels a little bit more like a swirl let's say going around the top of the planet so let me, let's just do a couple layers as tests, and then we can modify them. And again, you have to be practicing with the brushes because I have lots of different brushes. Look at this. Um, this one here, it's like a cloud, like identically to like a real cloud. I think this is it. Let me go a little bit wider here. What's cool with going white is then I can dull it down a little bit. All right, so I think this is it. <clears throat> And this rotates too, which is really cool. And I could even do this. So what if we go to like 10? Oh, look at that. See how realistic that looks? Now that was large. Now watch though, because I could shrink it down and I could scale it a little bit, right? That's the beauty of this. So if I get it here and I swirl that cloud a little bit, and then I come back over here, and I swirl that a little, and I'm going to go put another one like right next to it in here. Okay, see how realistic that looks? Now watch, here's the beauty, is now I'm going to scale it down. If I could use the stupid scale tools right, you see that? I get in there like that, and I get it in the right place, and look, that looks like a real set of clouds wrapping around part of the planet. <clears throat> the secret is, is being able to get that to be consistent and have it look correctly. You know, so you just got to sort of take your time and sort of build it up. And here's the problem, if you do too much of the brush, it looks too similar. So you can't always just come along and stroke the path, you know, have the brush go along a path like that because that's not going to quite feel right. So one thing that might, here's a little exercise that we can do is <clears throat> let's just create another layer here. I'm going to paint some straight clouds here and then I'm going to go in and warp them and bend them and scale them down and get them to fit in. I think that's a much better alternative and direction to go into. Uh oh, sorry. <coughs> I keep hitting Command Z with Alt because that's how Photoshop used to be. I'm not used to this change. So I'm painting off the edge of my canvas here. If I wanted to, there you go. If I change to a gray, I could see my canvas a little bit better. And then I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here right now and just sort of take my time. I'm going to start off at like a six on my brush. Because clouds have these really bright highlights, and then they tend to get really light. So I'm going to drop down to like a two or a three. See, and then they start to just fade off a little bit like that. You have a little bit of cloud, and then it tends to fade off a little like that. And to me, that feels like a good little cloud there, okay? And uh, what I can do with that 
is here, let me make it a little bit longer. Maybe it transitions and then maybe just to make it a little bit different and switch up to another brush that I have here. And that goes into a real thick. Maybe tap it over there a little bit so it blends a little. And then let's come back over here and let's switch it down. And then I have these three brushes on here. They're actually really good. This one is like literally a cloud. Someone actually like took part of a cloud. Here, let me get it 100%. Look at that. Boom, it's a cloud. It's a real cloud, you know. So it can work really cool in this scenario. I can really get it to bend in there. However, though, it's not, I want it to have this long, skinny feel to it. So I need to do it very softly, like a 2% or 3%. Even I want to put a little bit of it here like that. And you see how that blends in very nicely. That's going to look really, really cool once I get a little bit more. And I also have this one, too. This one does. We'll do this on another layer. Next. Look at that. Ooh, swirly cloud. That's right. Swirly crap cloud brush. That'll look fantastic if we stretch that. Okay. That's why when you're really bored on a Friday night, you should sit around, collect a bunch of brushes, and find what they do. That's how I got a bunch of these brushes. I either trade with artists that I work with, you know, or I go along and just, you know, I just go to like, you'd be surprised. DeviantArt used to be really bad, but now it's become a lot better. And then you could find some really cool brushes that you can use and people are just giving them away for free and they're really fantastic. And sometimes you even need to modify these brushes a little bit, you know. So that one's a little bit wider here. <clears throat> Let me just, there we go. That feels a little, God, that thing's super strong. Okay, so I, I like that right now. Here, I'm just going to take Transformation. Boop. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hold Alt. Ah, not Alt, it's here. And I'm going to scale her down like that. You see that? Aha, and that looks cool, because now if I get that in there, and then if I go to Transform that, and I make it a little smaller, I can actually copy and paste part of that, because they're different cloud formations. So watch, if I go to Warp now, I'm going to bring part of this guy up here. I'm not liking the new warp tool at all. Come on, get up there. There we go. Now I'm going to bring part of the body down. I'm going to bring this edge down to about here. I'm going to pull that bezier curve in like so. And then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to yank this guy down. Grab it about here. Really, I don't like how it does that. Try to get that curve in there. Hold on. We're not done yet. We're going to transform this guy and get it even smaller. I'm not liking the way this new version of Photoshop is. Look, it like overlaps the cloud. That looks so stupid right there. It's doing this weird bend thing to part of it. I don't know. I'm not digging that at all. But it doesn't look too bad. It makes it look a little better, but I'm still not liking it. It needs to be, it needs to be smaller. When you look at a planet reference and the detail, the clouds are very, very tiny. And they need to be really, God, I'm, I'm not digging this new tool here. Let me stretch this out. Like, yeah, that's what I was sort of thinking. Got to, has to be really thin like this. Yes, that feels good. Now I can try to warp that and get that to bend around a little bit more. So let's go to back to transformation. Let's go to warp. There we go. That to wrap around part of that planet. There we go. <clears throat> get that to sort of fudge in there a little bit. Get that hugging around. That's pretty cool. See how it wraps around there? <clears throat> I'm liking that a lot. It makes it feel like a nice cloud formation. I gotta bend that in a little bit. Get that busy curve to bow down a little bit more like that. See, it's like just the outer. That outer lip has some cool clouds in it, right? <clears throat> cool. Look at that. Doesn't that come out nice? So now do you see all the textures and the patterns are sort of starting to come together. And I haven't even done a glow. I haven't even done a f uh, like a, a, f a flare from like a moon or something, or excuse me, a moon from a sun or something coming off of it. I still have so many other little options that I could put into this. But what I am going to do right now, something that I'm a big believer in, is the, you know, once you create a couple layers, you can just copy and paste until your heart's content and you can move some things around. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create one more layer over here and then we're gonna start copying and pasting real quick. So let's go back into Cloud Brush. 
land and um, I have, I don't remember what this one is. Let's try this guy right here. Let's see what he does. Go to 100%. Go really light. So it has a nice rotational jitter on there, which is pretty cool. I like that, right? Builds it up a little bit. It's a little different, you know? Uh-oh. See what I did? <clears throat> My mistake. I'm going to Command Z and take some of that off. I accidentally painted on top of my other layer, and that's what happens when you're busy working and not paying any, any attention. I don't want to get rid of that cloud. I really like that segment in there because I can copy and paste that and use it again. <laughs> so this time, there, I had made a mistake. This time I'm going to create another cloud layer up here. I'm going to come back with my wonderful brush that I was just using, and then I'm going to come in here and try to get another cloud formation sort of just coming through here. I'm going to do a little bit of a stipple effect. So I have two approaches I can paint with. One is I can drag and paint. That's what my texture is going to look like. Or what I can do is I can do a little bit of stipple. So stipple was, you know, that old drawing technique where you take a pen and you make dots after dots. So stipple can work in two ways. One is that I can stipple at 100% and I can create like a nice area for the cloud highlights and then I can drop down to like 30% and then I can start stippling around and I could get some of this to blend in there. You see how that's working a little bit? So it's just another another approach and what I might do, um, it got a little bright there for me so I see that the vet brush has a lot of highlights at a certain value so then I'm going to come in here with this guy and see what happens if I can't sort of fuzz some of the clouds around a little bit to get them to blend in a little bit more in there. Okay. And to me, that's sort of cool. Look, separate layer here. So see, I can get that to blend on there. And it just looks a little bit different. Um, it adds a nice little bit of just a little specular lights, I think, is pretty cool. Okay, but I'm going to, yeah, they have two choices. I either want to dull it down or I want to erase a little bit. I think I'm going to take my eraser, go down to like 20%, get it a little lower. And I want to dull down just these highlights just a teeny bit. So I'm noticing it sort of looks like cloud, but not quite. So I definitely want this cloud brush back over here there again. So I'm going to move that to the bottom. Let's create another layer. And I really want to go back to my brushes and get that really defined cloud that I had before that was working pretty good. Um, I forget which one I use. There's one of these down here. Let's try this one, though. I haven't used this one in quite a while. I think this was actually a watercolor brush. It was... Yeah, it is. It was a watercolor brush in the original Photoshop set from like about five years ago. But I've discovered if you keep it down at like a really low setting, it can really give you a nice feel of like clouds, like little highlights and little parts drifting together, you know. And you'd have to go a little big with it to, you know, and then let's go ahead, let's take that, let's transform that. And... Um, Go back to control. I want to just pull this down a little bit more like this. See that light little haze? I really like that quite a bit. How it's sort of spreading along over there. And I create. So now I'm really creating some nice overlays over with those dark highlights on there. I think that's pretty cool. Now I don't like that right there. So you're like, oh, Phil, you have an edge line. Yep, yeah, because it was over the edge here. So how do I get rid of that edge line? There's a couple things I can do. Number one, I could take my eraser and I can go along and blend that in. That's one option. Another tip I can do is I can take the stamp tool right here, and the stamp tool is brush sensitive, so I'm already on that soft brush. So I could literally grab here and then come along here, and you see that it's going to show me what my pattern is going to be. Let me see if I can zoom in there really quick. So if I do that and click here, it starts to show me what my pattern is going to look like, and I can control it at 100. Watch. See that's 100%. If I don't want to do 100, I can go back down to like 20. And that's what makes the stamp tool really nice, is it really gives you this golden opportunity to get in there and blend in a little bit and get some really cool. Now, you can see one of the problems is that line is pretty well defined in there. So I'm just going to have to go down in my eraser, go down about 10%, and just really start nudging a little bit of this and taking this away. See that? And that just blends it in a little bit where I get that nice little, still feels like clouds going around there. Okay? 
All right. So still not done. I'm going to get a nice thin cloud stream like this one here. So my favorite brushes are the ones that I had down here towards the bottom. I feel like they were working the best right now. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. God, I'm so tired of this cough. Um, where is it? I lost my brain there for a minute. So I want to go back to this guy. This is pretty realistic. So is this guy. These four were all pretty good here. I'm trying to remember what this guy did real quick again. Yeah, so that one had a nice rotate on it. That was cool. That jitter rotate is quite wonderful because you could hit along a path and see so you can make it look like it's real and the clouds getting thicker and thin. But then you could also put a highlight or two on a little area and make it look like a nice little cloud highlight. And we can go lighter too. So now I'm at one and I go really light and I get this sort of nice cloud feel. But I'm command, I'm undoing, uh oh, not that one. No, let's redo that one. I like that one. Edit, redo. <coughs> there. Um, I'm going to go over here a little bit. That's sort of cool. Lights up. So let me move that around. You see how I have that there? So that's pretty cool. I can condense that, use it. I like that being over here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is. See if I can't rotate that to get it to match part of the circumference of the planet. And then I'm going to copy and paste that bad boy. I'm going to put it down here along that edge and really shrink it down. Okay? So select all, copy, paste that layer, and then bring it down over here. And just to have it be a little bit more white, I'm going to duplicate it on top of itself. And that's okay to do that because if you duplicate it on top of itself, you can just drop down the opacity later to get it to blend in. I'm going to go back to my eraser real quick here. I'm going to blend off these corners that I don't need anymore. Okay. Just think my corners are about done. And then I'm going to take this here and I'm going to transform it. I want to squash it down a little bit more like that. You see that? So it's nice and tight. And it still has a nice round effect to it. And I'm going to get it to fit right in there so it looks like right along that blue. Do you see that? To me, that's pretty cool. Right up about there. And I'm going to go <clears throat> rotate it a little bit more. I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to go to warp. And going to warp here, I'm going to just bend this in. Try to get this edge yeah, right like that along the edge there. See how cool that is? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> look at that. I mean, it's really starting to come together. I'm getting these little clouds in there, these little formations. I want to maybe create a little bit of a storm effect. That's something I haven't done. What if I go look for storm clouds? I know there's some probably really cool storm cloud brushes that I can get. That's really nice along there. It does a lot in there. So I'm going to take that again. And um, it's still in my paste memory. Do you see that? Um, however, though, I didn't have a clean off edge. So what I'm going to do now, select the one I just moved over here. I'm going to select all, copy that, and paste it. And that's a great thing, too, about Photoshop, is when you get stuff in your paste memory, you can just use it over and over. One thing I wish Photoshop would do when you go to transform something, I wish they would put an axis on it like in Maya so the axes would stay with the object whenever you transform it when you go from like left to right if that sort of makes sense. I want to scale that down get a nice tight fit in there. See if I can't maybe use that up in here. Make it look like there's another set of clouds sort of coming up around there wrapping and then I'm going to come back here Click this layer, that's layer 15, select all, copy and paste that, and bring that back over here, and let's rotate you. Now, someone with a good eye would pick on that pattern being the same, so how do you fix that? You take it here, you transform it, and you flip it horizontally, aha. Now that it's flipped horizontally, and we go to move that, the average artist is not, or the viewer, is not going to pick up your their eye on that. Now, a really good concept artist might pick it up, but that's part of the tricks of the trade, right? Learning how to create textures and build, you know, these realistic worlds and settings, right? I think that's pretty cool. Um, I scale it down a little bit. It looks like a nice little segment to right there. Okay. I want to fade it in a little so it's a little different. It's sort of cool. And then I want to paste that same one here. What if I enlarge it? If I do the opposite, yeah. Didn't like being enlarged, by the way, that large. There we go. I can use it to my advantage. Got 
actually had an idea. I'm going to turn it like this. I want to transform it. I want to squash it and condense it a little bit more. Like that. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just still not used to these stupid Photoshop controls. It's really irking me. There. See, that looks a little bit different. Yeah, it's like a cloudy mist to the planet right there. That looks pretty cool fitting in right about there. It's like a different set of clouds. Um, I want to grab that corner, make it come out of here. Let's go to transformation again, and then we're going to go to see if the distort can do it. You got to click inside it. Distort or skew might do it. So if I were to grab this corner and bring it down, let's see if how much that modifies. If I bring that down a little bit, that's pretty cool. Fits it in there somewhat nice. It's going to come over here, hit erase, go down to 100% erase. One thing you can do with erase is press shift and go along and just touch along the edge. And it's just going to make a straight line, really getting that to blend in. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm on my way. There's still some cool things I'd like to do, but for right now, for the demo, I mean, I'll come back into this. I really like to create a swirling cloud in there, but <clears throat> there's a couple things at this level that I'm, I'm really quite happy with right now that are happening, that are coming about. Um, yeah, I'm really liking the progression of this. So what I'm going to do is, is let me commit to all these clouds here and take all of these and let's merge them together. So look at that difference. Look at what the clouds do. They make it feel so much more realistic. Okay, and the, oh, I forgot to add those some clouds there to you. Um, I need to decide if I want those or not. I'm a little iffy on those. I'm going to keep those, but I might move them around somewhere else. So they're hitting a little bit of too much of the highlight for me right now. Okay, so I might keep those. These are some of my other layer options in here. Let's merge those all together. Oh, those are all their clouds too. Hold on. There it is. I just want to make sure I have everything. There's my mass set up. Um, I had clouds there. Those were the bottom clouds. These are sort of the other side clouds. So I'm going to call those side clouds that I thought were working pretty good. I'd like to create another mass in here, but that's not what I'm feeling. I like the clouds that are in there now. And there's a couple other things I'd like to do. What I, there's a couple ideas I had. One is I had this idea of darkening the mass structures. And see how you can see like these little areas of dark and light and continents. I'm just curious if I come in there with a brush and really darken some of that, what it might feel like and how it might really work. So um, I, I like this cloud, but I don't because it's killing some of my nice cerulean blue, that sort of, or excuse me, that turquoise blue. It's down there, and I really want that turquoise blue to pop. That can pop more, and I could probably use that cloud if I get a nice glow around this. So I might come in and do that at the very, very end. So what I'm thinking about doing right now is what I was just describing. Let me put a layer up here on top, and then call this dark continent. There we go. Even though I misspelled that, that's fine. I'm going to get this down about right here, <clears throat> maybe over the ocean mass. And I just want to see what would happen if I take a nice thick and thin brush like this, a nice painting texture brush. Actually, um, this one's quite wonderful. It has these wonderful little highlights on it. And if I switch, and if I come in here really lightly and sort of connect some of these areas of darks, what might happen? So let me move that all the way under to about there. Let's just see what happens real quick. Let me zoom in. There, let's see if we, it starts to work or not. I think we have to go, let's go to 100% first. There. Okay, that's working. Definitely working, right? Doing no 100%. I just want to get these, I, like I sense little cracks. You feel that crack in there? Right in there? So if I come along and sort of press down in some areas, it might magnify some of that and really give me that planetary feel. And then with my clouds being up on top of it, the clouds are going to sit up higher, which is quite wonderful. So I just want to go around some of these areas and punch up a little bit of the values that might be there. See if that helps. You know, there's like little cracks in the crust and, and part of the feel of it too. It's just I'm thinking of like thick and thin contour lines. You know, I feel like that line comes down through here. Looks like it sort of wraps down here and fades off a little bit. And this brush 
Let me show you what the brush does at full. It, it's hard to see. Let me show you in white. It has a nice thick to thin highlight. I'm sorry, there. See that? It has a nice fade off. Look at that. See, that makes a really nice fade off for dark to light. Uh, see how cool that is? So that means I can really get in there. I can use it a couple different ways. I can use it as a highlight brush, and I could use it also on a couple of my darks in some areas to pop them out a little bit. So that's what I'm trying to do in here now. This is coming here and just sort of thick and thin and get that feeling of like crust. This is how you also, one of the secrets on how you sort of paint granite. Granite has little veins in it and these little veins like connect to little areas and they have little secondary veins and primary little cuts in them. That was a little light there, but again, go back to the eraser. So I can just blend it in a little bit. Creates a nice feel. So let's come back over here. Get a lot smaller. There's a nice feel. See that? Feels like a vein sort of in there. So I'm just taking this brush and just lightly going along some of these areas, trying to feel like they're now we'll look if I press down, you see how dark that gets very quickly. So I don't want to get too dark, but then I can stop and look at what I've done. See the difference? It adds like a little bit of a nice crackle feel to the planet. I think I just made that word up. The way to learn the most about digital painting is to sit and paint textures in cubes and in spheres and really get a solid understanding of what the brushes are and how they work and why they work and what they allow you to do and not do. And then especially gives you a better understanding of understanding uh, the layer adjustments and how layers sit on top of each other and how they blend in. Okay, I like that. I like that feel right in here and how it got sort of Oops. A little big in there. Just adds a little bit more <coughs> to what's there. Now, um, <clears throat> we talked about making a world on there or a city of some kind. Let's see if we can throw something like that together on our planet real quick. However, though, I'm almost an hour into this, and the one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't even saved my file. Come on, Phil, you should know better than that. So I'm going to call this ship leaving planet demo because without saving, yeah, I should know better than that. If my power went off or crashed, I would lose all that work of where I'm at right now, which is not a good thing. Okay, so one of the things I was telling students about, a golden little secret that you can do, and let me see if I have this in my brushes still, is in my brush library, I had, the problem is I don't remember if it's still there or not. I don't think I'd have it anymore. So we can do it without... Oh, those are some other clouds I found in here. That's a cool cloud brush, too. Yeah, I forgot about these. i got to move these up. I forgot I had these in here. There's some other cool clouds. Look at that. Ooh, that's bitchin' texture. Look at what that just did. That makes it look like little land masses. I like that quite a bit. Let me go forward again. Edit. Step forward. See, happy accidents. Redo brush. Edit. Redo brush. That's cool. That really... I forgot I had that. I'm just doing it with the dark setting, and it really gets some nice, nice feel in there for that planetary. That's too dark there, but if I got it in the right place, a little smaller. Yeah, it's quite wonderful, isn't it? Also allows me to pop out a little bit 
of what I had underneath there. There, I undid the last couple ones. <coughs> I gotta move those up. So, all right, back to what I was talking about, the microchip. I thought I had a microchip in here. Problem is, is I saved too many, a, a huge brush library. I have way too many. And that one could work. It's not quite geometric enough. Um, I have some cool solar rays. Oh, another thing that could work too is water reflections. Uh, yeah, actually, water reflections would be great for a planet. Because look, I'll do this on another layer here. Check this out. And then I'll go back to what I was going to show you. Let's see, if I take water reflections, and if I go, what else I can do? If I can switch it here, and I come here, and if I hit, see what that's doing is it creates this like weird nebula effect. Watch it 100%. Look at that. Ooh, it's like electricity wrapping around the planet. So that's that can be a really fantastic brush because it's on a separate layer right now. And um, here, let me delete that. And here's where you can use this to your advantage. You got to transform it and get it to fit. And then you got to scale it down. And then if you warp that a little bit, oh, yeah, that starts to look like there's some kind of fucky, funky. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say the swear word. I was trying to say funky. That's some type of funky electro, uh, electricity element going off there. And if I drop it down a little bit, that's pretty cool. That is way cool. That does a lot to add to that planet feel, right? Doesn't it? That's a cool little feel. That's something totally different. In fact, let me go back and now I want to take that. I want to paint another one here and make it larger and a little bit lighter. Go boom, put one like there. I'm going to transfer that one. Uh oh, same layer. That's why I don't like lecturing and demoing at the same time. So I'm too busy talking. Copy and then uh, delete. Paste it on another layer. Transform it. And then hit enter. Transform again so I get it lined up. And then I want to go to warp. Um, so I'm going to stretch it this way a little bit and warp. I want to get it to sort of make it feel like it's going around that circumference of the planet. That feels pretty good. Then I'm going to go back to eraser and go back to about 10 and just come along in here, maybe about 20. Sort of blend this in and get rid of that hard edge line. Okay. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to move it. I could stamp it. Look at it, see that? If I stamp it a little bit, get in there, it makes it look like the pattern's still going a little. Okay. Okay, and then since it's larger, I want to roll that over like that. See that? It matches part of the circumference of the planet. And then let's drop that in. Let's go down. Look at that. Blend it in. Ooh, spooky planet. That's sort of cool. I like that. It's a little different. Okay. Now, <clears throat> getting a little bit too many highlights in there. I might take that out later. Later, It's getting maybe a little too. That actually could be... What happens if I went dark with it? Hold on. Just curious. This is why layers are so, option, so awesome, right? If I go to levels, and if I switch that and go the other way... Oh, look at that. Creates a really nice dark effect to that planet in there. But if I drop it underneath all the clouds, get it down even lower to the ocean mass, look at how neat that is. See, that adds to that under part of the planet to the dark side. See how cool that is? Creates some nice little structures in there. I like that quite a bit. I think that worked pretty fantastic right about there. I'll leave that in. Happy accidents, folks. Okay. I'm trying to find my microchip board. I might have it in another brush pack saved on my other computer. So um, I'll try to find the best way to do this and to make this look like we have a little city down there. I'm just not seeing it in here right now. Um, I have some other little things. Okay, you know what? I know where it is. Some of my custom shapes. 
and I didn't bring my custom shapes. So let me pause the recorder and then we're going to come back and make one. All right, everybody, welcome back. So what I have up here are just three basic images of microchips that I grabbed from online. I have one image here, one image here, and one here. Okay, so there are different pros and cons about these images. Technically, you could run one or a couple of these. These happen to be darker images, meaning that they're like the inside of the computer with a dark blue, which means these would copy and paste and work just fine on my planet. However, though, if you wanted to create a custom shape, you might need something with a little bit more variation so you can work through the threshold settings, okay? What that means, let me show you an example, okay? Uh, this is how you create custom shapes, but we're just gonna talk about this briefly, okay? So if I have this setting right here, I could try to get as close as I could just the white lines and get the black lines out. There's a couple ways I could do that. One is I could select color range, I could come over here and I could touch this particular area. I can hit OK and I can hit Delete. And if I hit Deselect, you see I have pretty much the, the rest of the board gone with these little city, uh, excuse me, with these little microchip icons. I could select that, okay, copy that and paste that on. That's one way to do it, okay? Another way to do it that we do with custom shapes is we take this right here and we put it in the threshold. And threshold will be listed under image adjustments and you scroll down you'll find threshold what threshold does is it basically separates white from black completely in the image allows you to pick which one you want uh, excuse me separates it and then once you have it separated like this now wait let me go back there and do it again because there's one thing I forgot to mention I'm sorry I'm too busy talking <clears throat> too fast here in the threshold setting you'll notice there's a slider right here forgot to mention that because if you slide it to one way it'll give you more details and that's the detail we want right there see that because it separates the white from the black so I had to move that slider over okay now I hit okay now if I go to select and go to color range and then touch black and hit okay and hit delete okay <clears throat> what it's left is the white and it's really hard to see so I'm going to deselect select all copy that and then if I come back over here to my, my planet, and if I hit paste, you see what it just did? It gave me the microchip board itself that I could put on my planet to make it look like there's a little city down there. So some of you are wondering, well, like, Phil, it doesn't really look like a city. Well, that's because it's in white right now. Um, that's just the way it came out. What I can do is switch it to levels, and I can grab the bar here and move it over. Aha, you see that? I can put it to black now. And then I can go to transform and I can go to uh, distort or perspective or warp. More, not really perspective, but probably distort. I, you know what? Distort isn't going to do it. I have to go to warp. Warp's going to allow me to bend it a little bit towards where the planet direction is going. So I want to have it matching part of the curve. That's not working as well as I thought it would. But bear with me. So we get it down. Let's say we get it down to about there. Let's bring this guy back in here. About so. I don't like that nasty curve over there. We gotta move that over. So I think Photoshop just kept the normal warp options and they saved a couple. That's good. Transform that now. And now I can make it a lot smaller. There. If I were to do something like that, let's say. Okay. And then if I were to come in here and hit opacity and lightly blend that in and then if I were to erase some little parts of it and get that to blend in the part of the environment and then if I were to hit with little building highlights it could look like a city down there or like part of a continent basically um, and that's one option I didn't like the way that turned out depends on the painting you're working on and how it might be coming out so another option that we have is we could just take the whole image itself so I'll select all and let's copy and let's go back to our work and let's paste. Now it is blue, right? So if I transform it and if I enlarge it a little bit, there it is. I have it sort of set like that. And what I can do is if I go into my layers and look at multiply is always going to darken. You could darken and then lighten it in opacity. Overlay tends to work pretty nicely where it blends it in pretty good. Uh, soft light also can work really well too. 
um, and you just kind of go through it. It's always going to change. So for us, exclusion could work pretty good because of our particular contrast and gradation ratios of the planet that fits in there. Do you see how that fits in pretty good? So then I could turn this, get it to about here. <clears throat> and I, I have to erase and stamp and just get that to blend in. So let's, if we can scale it down a little bit more, let's say about so, get that in about there. And then let's go to transform again. Let's put a little bit of warp. Let's see if I can bend that just a little bit in the middle. Just a little bit out, a little bit there. And then a little bit like that. Then I'm going to come into erase right now. Before I erase, let me drop opacity a little bit. See if I can get that to blend in. And let's try stamp. Let's try grabbing a little area, putting it about here. I'm going to go to about 40%. Let's try about. Now, my stamp's giving me a large area because I have a large selection of brush. So if I move the selection of the brush down, I tap about here, it's going to go down to about there. So it gives me a little bit of, see how I did that really quick? So I might click here, and that might go in that way a little bit. This allows me to add on a little bit more to what I'm working on. <clears throat> It sort of blends it in a little bit. And then what you could do is you could lightly erase it just a teeny bit. Get it to blend in a little bit more. See, it starts to look like there's a little city down there. What I don't like is that square sort of chip in there. Let me transform. And that's where Distort would come in here. Or I might be able to shift it a little bit. Get it to match up a little bit more to the circumference of the planet, let's say like that. So it's matching the angle of the lines of the contour lines wrapping around that planet. Okay, and then what I can do with the last is I can type in high, and I'm going to come in here with a brush. A perfect brush to do this with is the one we were painting with earlier because it's the fuzzy brush. And what we would do is we go in here and grab like a light orange of some kind. And there we go. Let's go down about there. Let's grab about right there. Yeah, about right there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to zoom in to do this. And we're going to put this on a separate layer so we can make them very, very small. And then we're going to make like little city lights. Basically, how you make a city light is you do this. You come in here and you tap. And you hit it like that with a little bit of a bright highlight. I need to go a little bit more towards... A little bit more white in there so let's try like about right here let's say about right there and then you widen the brush a little bit and the brush gets a little bit wider you put put it down to one or two and you make it a little bit larger and you make a little bit of a glow on it like that okay so watch now i have that glow copy it i'm going to paste it in the computer's memory and what i can do now oops what did i just do hold on what did i do I hit hotkeys I don't know about. I think I hit crop. There. Okay, that's done. So now, if you look, oh, I don't like that at all, then this move feature they have. I can move that little highlight around. You see that? So there. Now it's in the computer's memory is paste. So I can put one over there. I can put one over there. Because when you're looking at planets, they have these little grids and pathways. I can put one back there. And what the eye does is the eye tends to read things in primes and have groupings. So if I group things in threes and fives and sort of spread it across, I'm going to take that one I diluted a little bit. I'm going to put one over there. And I'll put one somewhere about there. Maybe put two together about there. Move it over a little bit. And if I zoom out right now, see what it sort of looks like on the planet there's a little base down there. And that would be a pretty large base, almost the size of a, of a continent, but we're talking about in the future, right? So what I can do is take this layer here, 
I put down there was not ocean mass, or is it? Is it 17? There it is. And I'm going to just drop the opacity and blend it in a little bit more. There, like that. And then it gives you the feel that there's maybe like a little city with a couple little lights on. And I can make lights and some other colors too. I can do a couple other changes. You just have to be careful. You don't put in too much detail because too much detail will kill it and it won't look right. But it's a pretty cool technique you can do to make something look pretty realistic just by using part of the outline of a circuit board, right? Okay. All right. I'm going to wrap up. I need to put one more. I need to finish this up here. And see when you look at it from there, if I had one or two over there, it can make, make it look like it's a busy planet. Okay, all right, the next thing that I want to do, and I, I need to clean my files a little bit. I have so much stuff here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, so I'm going to call it a city. And then I might come into this and adjust it a little bit later. But I have all these other layers up here. Some of these are my lights I just did. I need to clean this up eventually. So hold on a minute. Let me move. I'm going to grab these. These are all my lights on okay and what's cool is i can also have some other lights on to make it look like it's a busy planet maybe it's not a busy planet you make that decision okay so um let me see i have this what's this layer there it's uh some other darks so i'm going to move this down to with my dark layer right here and move these together okay so the next thing i want to do let's see i have the lights on even just the lights on can look pretty cool too um, we had that cloud range we were talking about, and what was layer 15 here? Layer 15 was some of that other electrical little goodies here. That's fine. Let's take that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another layer up on top here, and I'm going to call this glow. And this is going to be that turquoise glow from the planet with maybe like a light flare coming off of it. So what we're going to do for this Let's go back to our good old fuzzy brush, and we're going to take our fuzzy brush right here, and we're going to try to match this up and go right along there just like I did. So there's a couple options on how I could pull this off. I could try to hand paint it like this, and if I come back on my layer right now, now that's a warmth. We don't really want the warmth, even though it's sort of cool, it matches it. I want this nice turquoise. So if I grab that turquoise color, I want it a little bit richer like this, so it's really bright towards white. And then I'm going to come in here, and right now I have it above. I don't want it to be above. I want it to be below, okay, because if it's above, it'll cover up my other detail. So I'm going to come in here really quick. So the two ways that I could do this is, one, I could come along here with a brush. I can sort of go along the planet back and forth. So I, let me try that a couple times. And then I'll get that nice sort of planetary glow that I want. You see that? It makes it look like it's really working. That's one option that I could do. Another option that I could do for my glow is I could come in here since it's on the bottom and I could go full size with my brush. I get my brush right about, that's maximum size on the brush. So what I could do is this, is go like this and let's go to zero. Boom, nail that down like that. Then I can move this, get it under my planet. I can go to transform and I can scale it out like so. Uh oh, I hate that scale. Sorry, I'm not used to these new options in here. I keep hitting the wrong button. Wish Photoshop would give me that option there. So I can get the problem is, is it transform that? That's one of the things I hate about Photoshop. You see it's going to cut off the image to where the transform option is. And so that's why that option sort of sucks. I could get it about there, but then I have a line that's through the piece, and that doesn't work well. So it works better for me just to come in and sort of paint it in like this. Now, I still want there to be a nice, stronger glow ring in there. So what I'm going to do is see if I can't come in here and get, um, and I'll adjust that. I want a little bit stronger of a turquoise that's in there because that's that light bending around part of the planet so what I might do is <clears throat> let me see what's another brush I could use so a texture brush could really come in handy I also have some light flares in there that are pretty cool we'll put a flare on there in a minute 
and then we can move it around and decide whether or not we want to use it. So here, let me go back up to this brush. I have this one. Let's try this guy right here. Try number 65. Let's see how he works. This is a new brush I got from a student. I haven't used it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Nice, right? Looks like another planet back there. Okay. I have not used this before. So I've got a new layer here. And this one might need to be up on top. I'm going to call it Glow. All right. I'm trying to get a nice ring. That's way too bright, though. I want something really bright I can blend in. Let me go down to about a five. And slowly. That was hard to do. I just moved my hand over the image and I try to get that down. Now I'm going to drag it underneath and see if it works. If I create that glow, let me go to the other glow and I want to transform that and bring it out a teeny bit more. Like that. That's pretty cool. Starting to work a little bit more. It's a little bright. I like that ring. This outside ring is a little bright. I'm going to adjust the opacity down just a little bit. Bring this one down just a little bit. There. And I think I'm going to wrap that up in just a minute here so I can come back and look at my planet with a fresh set of eyes a little bit later. Now, one thing I could do if I come back in here, remember I had my ships in here. So you can see there's the line. I had the Rebel. And then I had the TIE Fighter coming in here. So now I could go in and I could start painting those. And you can see where some of the change is going to happen in terms of I have these local values and I'll paint on top of them, right? Okay. Um, one other thing I could do on there, if I have that glow of my planet, is I could put a starburst. Not really a starburst, more like a light burst. Let's see. I do have a couple in my brush library. <clears throat> Let's see what it would look like. I'm just curious. Could be really cool. It could work out on the piece. <laughs> and then it could totally not work out. So let's try this guy right here. Right. Yeah, that didn't really work out. I need to be bigger. I might need to be stronger. I'm only at about, let's try 80%. Yeah. There. Does that make sense? It could be light coming off the red, the edge of the planet, sort of coming around the corner. And then I'm just curious, what if I came back and I hit that again? A little bit larger, a little smaller, like that. There, it's like light coming around the planet. That could possibly work. And then once I get in there to start painting our Rebel and TIE Fighter, I can get them to sort of match up. So imagine if I had, now this is where I go back to the glow, where I like that glow. Now I'm going to switch back to my fuzzy brush and I want to intensify that glow because now I'm looking at the star fighter uh, excuse me the star fighter <clears throat> I just had an Advil uh, cold and sinus and now it's getting me all doped up excuse me if I come down here and just sort of hit this with a little bit more blue can you imagine the orange thrusters now coming on and if I have that blue coming around that planet it's really going to have a lot of contrast against uh <coughs> that's pretty cool against that fighter in the foreground and it would really make it pop and that could be a really good piece with the light coming through like that i need to show the light reaching around the surface of the planet too that's one thing i haven't done so what that would mean is i need to come up to like a top layer like this and i need to have a glow effect meaning it's a sphere light is going to wrap around that sphere and bend around it so I'm going to have an area not quite like that but probably something more like this a little bit light's going to come bouncing around part of that planet right about there and it's going to be wrapping around part and then this will get a little bit darker but I'm liking the way that planet looks the only thing I'm not liking now is this uh, effect I put on there it's too large it has to be uh, shrunk down a little bit more. Come on. So not used to this. Ooh. 
little too wide for me. I don't like that either. So I would just need more of that around. I could leave that, I guess, and fade it in there a little bit more. Let's do that. Let's select all, copy, and paste that. <clears throat> Let's put it in different parts of the planet. Put it over here, maybe. Then I'll really drop the opacity down to blend it in. So it looks like a little bit of cloud, a little bit of mixture there. So to me, that's pretty cool. I have a planet that's working pretty good now. And what I could do is save it. I could go in and start putting some emphasis into the ships. That would be sort of my next approach on this, okay? So that's the end of our demo. That's us painting the planet, getting the details in there. We started with a base local value. And just to basically go through it with you, this is one of the things I always like to do is if we come in here and, oops, um, I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do, there, I, I don't like those clouds anymore, so I'm going to delete that layer. And do I have those lights in there for the city? Do I want to put the city in? Let's say we left this. This time, we'll leave the city out for right now. So I'm just going to put them here. Turn that off. Okay, so what I wanted to do is this. I wanted to go through the layers because it's really cool to show you that progression on how we got to here. So when we're looking at this, let's take off the fighter and we'll zoom into how we digitally painted the planet. We have some good effects in there. There's a couple other things like I would like to do more clouds. I'd like to adjust. I could have some electricity wrapping around the planet. That could be pretty cool. Um, I don't know. There's a couple things I'd like to get in there and maybe readjust, but let me just turn all these layers off. And if I turn these off and we start breaking it down, you can see where we started from. So obviously, if we build back through here, we started with this. And we we started with a basic sphere shape, which is our fundamentals of the light and the gradients. And we started putting in, excuse me, um, not that, started with the ocean masses. I merged all those layers together, put some clouds in, sort of worked our way up into here. And then we came back and we put the glow in and that little that light coming across it. And it starts to give the good a good feel of a planet. I think it's starting to work. I, a couple of things I'd like to do. These are too far spaced out for me. They should be tighter together because it's wrapping around the circumference of the planet. And they should be, get really tight because it's getting really thin as it wraps around. I'd also like to see more little cracks and some details in other parts of the planet. Um, and then I did have this idea of maybe a people, uh, excuse me, a couple of uh, meteorites sort of floating around maybe a little bit. So um, hold on, well, let me check my glow here. Something looked a little different. I have an overlap layer there. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. <laughs> there it is. There are my darks on there. Um, can I erase that? This is where I'm wondering, that's the other glow I put in? No, that's the glow. That's weird. I don't remember that being there. See the scratchy lines in there? I don't know if I just <coughs> accidentally erased that or what. Not the city. Hmm. Now I'm wondering if I deleted something because for some reason before, I didn't have that scratchy feel to that. So I need to go back to that glow layer. There, it's not the glow. Get at the ocean mass. That's exactly what it is. So what that is, what I did notice it working smaller, is that is overspray from my ocean. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to hit erase. I'm going to go along. Oops. I'm going to erase anything that was out here before. Now it starts to feel a lot better. And I, if I turn on glow, like that, there, it starts to give me that planetary feel. Now, the glow is pretty consistent. I should erase some of it to really make it feel like the light's coming around from there. That's something that I sort of just realized. So let me see what I want to erase. I might take part of this, merge them together, go into erase, go down about 10%. I notice I have some more in there still. Find that layer for ocean mass. I didn't erase over here. Yep, 
There we go. That's just a little bit of, there we go. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go into the glow that I put on the planet. I don't want it to be too bright. It has to fade. If the sun, if light's coming from there, this should fade around. So I'm going to go to erase and then lightly sort of erase part of this out. I need to go to zero 05 because it's so light in here. It's picking up part of my pattern. There, like that. That way it feels like it's coming around that corner. Erase a little bit more off the top, coming towards us. And that's pretty cool. I'm going to leave it at that. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you back in the classroom. Take care.